a shamanic tradition, it is often said that a person should visit the place of their birth at least once a year to regain their strength. And this is also very much based upon the state of the aura. As I said, the aura absorbs the energy from the environment and every environment is different if you're born in the mountains or in the desert or in the forest or next to the sea. Every place has a different energy. And if you find yourself yeah, moving and living in a place which has a very different energy, then your aura is going to struggle to yeah, make do with the energies which are available compared to the energies which are ideally available, which are the normal healthy mix of energetic nutrients for your being. Aura is actually made to feed on a specific mix of energies. And very similar to the liver which can store vitamin D during the winter, we can also yeah, absorb energies and store it to maintain us for a, yeah, for a while even though those energies are not in our environment. So our aura is always adaptive. It is trying to get the energies which it needs. And if you're in a, living in a place which is similar, so one desert to another desert, then it's usually quite okay, or from one mountain into another mountain. But if you really change, for instance, the mountains to, to the sea, uh, then often the change of energy is such that there will be a constant lack of energy if you don't visit a more natural region to you uh, once in a while. And usually this lack of energy doesn't create a weak aura, but it creates an unstable aura. Because it is not that there is no energy, it is just that the energy mix is not harmonious or normal to you. And this usually results in people becoming very irritable, um, having a very short fuse, uh, feeling unsettled, um, and often cannot really put their finger on what is wrong. But if they would spend a few weeks um, at their place of birth, it would, will usually like heal up again and the person will be able to spend some time away from it. In our homes, where we spend most of our time, it's very essential that we try to put in all these elements which our aura needs to feed us. So it can be good to bring certain elements actually from your home place or which are carrying the energy from your home um, into your in, yeah into your living space or into your bedroom. So if you find that yeah, a place you're visiting has a very good energy and you can take a little stone from there or some other little souvenir or some piece of handicraft. That can also help to enrich the energy um, around your living room or around your bedroom where you will spend a lot of time absorbing those energies, feeding and balancing yourself with those energies. because the aura is also always trying to feed itself of the environment. This also makes travel so exhausting and sometimes very disorienting for people who have a sensitive aura. Because while you're in the car or in the train, constantly the aura is trying to attune to the changing environment, which is changing almost continuously. And uh, in a way, plane travel is less exhausting for the aura because there's nothing to attune to. There are no like trains and landscapes and rivers flashing by within your energetic proximity because you're high above it. As soon as you're like a couple of hundred meters above the ground, your aura cannot pick up the energies from the landscape below unless you have a very sensitive chakras like birds do. So for humans, um, they're in a way floating in a bubble uh, of their own energy and the energy of the other passengers and of the plane, um, which is more or less stable for much of the trip, which makes, on the one hand, flying in a plane more disorienting, because when you land, then all the shift has to change at once, but also you're not exhausted as much by the constant changes which you would get 
if you would be driving a train or driving a car being in contact with the landscape. So the experience of travel is very different. If you're traveling by car or by train you're gradually adapting as the landscape is changing. If you're landing with a plane then usually you're hit with a sledgehammer when you suddenly find yourself in a different environment without having the ability to adapt gradually. So depending on the person's oral structure, whether they are able to make great leaps in energy very easily or whether they prefer to make gradual changes, it is better for them to travel by car or train or by plane. Some things you can do to, in a way, soften the blow is to make your aura smaller and less sensitive while you're traveling. So you can decrease the sensitivity by stabilizing it with, for instance, a Labradorite, and also by actively trying to pull it towards yourself and away from the environment. So then the travel is still exhausting because you're not absorbing energy while you're traveling because your aura is too small. But also you're not having to make a constant adaptation which will probably cost more energy than they would give you. If you're traveling by plane, it's also a great opportunity because there is so little around that aura tends to expand, which makes it very sensitive. So traveling by plane is an ideal opportunity for meditation or for prayer because you're free from lots of disturbing influences and your aura is actually big enough to sense the more subtle energies which are around you. And while traveling or while at your home you can more or less um, arrange how you react to it. A much more challenging environment in general is the work environment. Because unlike our home we cannot choose to remove or to bring energies into the workplace. And we also cannot close ourselves off um, as we would do while traveling. So we are very much confronted with a, with a situation where we are the ones who will have to adapt rather than being able to create an environment which is healthy for us, which is nourishing for us. And within any such more complex social environment, it is important to create a kind of a, an anchor point, a refilling station where we can go if we uh, feel we need that shelter. And it can be that we have our favorite person at work or even a favorite person at a party we go to or any social gathering we go to, a person whose energy is most similar to us and will help us to stay ourselves to remain the same and remain in a way uninfluenced or not dragged away from uh, by the work environment as much as would otherwise happen. We can also have an activity at work which helps us to rebalance. So maybe you want to take a, a walk during lunch and go into the park or you might want to pray or to meditate or do some yoga exercises to compensate for the work stresses which you are experiencing. Ultimately though a work environment is not completely under our control even though we can try to use our attention and our focus selectively to get as much good things out of it and not pick up as much bad things. But the best way to deal with the work environment is actually to create another persona. To create, you could say, a work personality and put this programming of the work personality in our aura. So then we are in a way being and communicating from that persona, from that role, rather than being, trying to be ourselves at work and trying to fulfill our role at the same time. So ideally we would have jobs where we can just be ourselves, but often the demands of work don't allow us to be ourselves and rather than struggling with trying to maintain ourselves, it is sometimes okay to say like, okay, I will 
create this work persona then when, before I step across the work space threshold I will put on this uniform and when I get back home I will take off the uniform and then I can be myself again. This is often less of a struggle and less of a strain. Um, if the work persona, however, is very much different from your normal persona, it can also be a little bit troubling because there will always be some remnants of the work persona intruding on the private life and the other way also of the things happening in your private life intruding upon the work persona. So there's never a complete separation, but at least some level of separation will help to uh, make it easier to bear. Particularly if the work persona is harmonious in itself, then it can just run more or less automatically. So you can in a way go into your work environment, turn on the automatic pilot, and when you get home again, turn off the automatic pilot and then guide your own life again. And this is kind of an ideal circumstance where you can in a way zone out. Of course you lose several hours of your life, but in exchange you gain the finances which hopefully will allow you to do what you would like and to manifest as you would like during your spare time. So people get um, in a way trapped or addicted to their work personas or even other personas Some people even create a relationship persona or a daddy or mommy persona or even a persona they wear when they're visiting their parents or certain friends and then it becomes not so much of a simple adaptation but then it becomes an addiction where the person feels unwelcome in their own life or unable to deal with the complexity of life and they start hiding behind all these masks and illusions and they in a way create a web of lies and illusions around themselves um, and it makes it impossible for people to reach the real you or to communicate as the real person ultimately this real person will become starved for attention starved for stimulation uh, but it won't know how to escape from it because all it knows, its only strategy, is to create these masks. And ultimately, um, often insanity or depression or uh, mania or some other psychological imbalance will result from having too many personas, too many masks. So this is also unhealthy. And the person needs to be able and to be courageous enough to take control over their own lives. And to say like okay to hell with everybody else to hell with everybody's expectations to hell with my environment i'm going to live for myself now i'm going to be honest now and people can either accept me or damn me and get rid of me but whatever will happen at least i will have myself Sometimes it is necessary to make such a step, especially if the person is faced with burnout or um, similar problems, often stress-related problems for having to manage the stress between the original personality which wants to go in one direction and the persona which is locked on a very different development path or career path. Working with clients who have these multiple personas and in their uh, aura can be quite challenging because it's often also difficult to reach that persona, uh, the real person behind the persona and to find out what they really want and to get them to take responsibility rather than letting all these yeah, patterns which are you know, adopted from their environment run them. Often a person who has too many personas is a sign of a damaged or weakened ego which cannot yeah, protect them or doesn't have enough skills to create a good survival mechanism without having to resort to these personas which are in a way um, methods of giving in to the demands of the society or the environment around them. 
So personas can be, in a way, a necessary evil in the works in the workplace, and it can be the best of all options. But ultimately, it is best if the person can just be themselves for the largest amount of time and be open and honest with everybody around them. But it is getting more and more common to work with personas and we are expecting people to behave in certain ways so you could say the acceptance we get from society becomes less and less and the expectations we have from our environment become more and more and this really leads to uh, more and more masks being created and ultimately creating more and more um, loneliness in people feelings that they're not seen, not supported, not accepted. And out of this loneliness comes insecurity and lots of phobias result from that. So ultimately our unhealthy society is creating unhealthy workplaces and it would be good if it would be less um, imposing norms upon people and would allow more freedom and creativity from the uh, people in the workplace. But uh, so standardization is, you could say, an evil <laughs> um, which is not good for the mental health of the people who are working there. On the one hand, it makes the business processes easier, um, it takes away some insecurity and stress because you know exactly what to expect. But the price we we pay for that standardization is usually too high.